don't know about you, but I am quite easily distracted. Uh, it's part of my ADD thing, I guess, but I, I, I'll come up with some great ideas and then my brain will be off in this direction and then off in that direction and, and uh, it's kind of hard to tie it all together sometimes. And that's usually why I have to write stuff down and that's no more important than it is in the programming world because programming is nothing if not fully logical. Uh, it has to be completely ordered and logical Otherwise, you're not going to develop good programs. So let's take a look here at some of the programming logic that is going to be useful in developing good programs. I mean, it all starts somewhere, right? So one of the first things you're going to want to work on is coming up with something that we call a program sequence. Now, what does that mean? This is really uh, kind of a plain English method for being able to put your thoughts down on paper. Uh, there's not really a formal idea for this or anything like that. Uh, if you have been to college or any higher education or even in probably in high school, uh, you may have had to write papers that required an outline. Uh, that's a good way to keep you on track. And that's kind of what a program sequence is as well. It's the, it's the implementation of writing down what you're trying to do, what the goal is, some of the maybe pitfalls that you see that are coming uh, that could be an issue. Uh, so it's kind of bullet point, if you will. If you think of it in kind of a PowerPoint-ish way, then that's probably what you could come up with there. It's just an ordered sequence of steps that you want the computer to perform. You might have on there, you know, if this is the paper, you might have a preamble of a, a paragraph or two of what your goals are, things like this. And then you'd have your sequence, sequenced order of steps here, one after the other, and probably a similar fashion to that. Again, it's not really formal. You don't have to use bullet points. You can use numbered points if you want to. Or if you have some other logical way of putting all this down on paper, you're welcome to go to it. But the basic idea here is it's also going to help you to identify ambiguity. In other words, if your goal's not clear or your process is not clear here, you need to knock that out kind of early in the process so that you don't <laughs> write bad things into the code. Another good idea is to use a flowchart. This is going to help you to simplify complex sequences and visualize what your program is going to be. Now, this a lot of times will involve more than just you as well, uh, because you'll be able to have other, if you have other people there, they can identify uh, potential weaknesses or potential directions that the program could go in that maybe you just didn't think of. You know, we all can't think of everything, right? So a lot of programming uh, involves teams of people, and a flowchart is very useful in that whole discussion. It'll also help to identify branching and looping. So we might have, you know, the start of our program right here in our flowchart, and then in the end of our program would be over here, but here in the middle, there might be something that branches off. So if certain condition exists, then we might have another whole sequence of events that takes place down here before the program ends. And if a different condition exists here, then again, we might have another whole sequence of instructions that's unrelated to the ones down here, but it's a whole different, whole different sequence of events. And then when, it's, when it's done, it goes to the end. And these can get to be quite involved, and so that's why you want to diagram the whole thing out. A loop is somewhat similar to that. So again, we have a beginning over here, a start, and then end over here. We have our decision point in the middle, and then you know maybe there's a simple yes or no involved in this. Let's say that the answer really must be yes in order for us to go to the end over here. And if the answer is no, then we have to go back and meet some kind of a condition or something here, and then go back to the beginning, and now that the condition has been met, when you go back to this decision point, now the answer is going to be yes, and we can continue on and finish the program. It's also a good sanity check to avoid logic loops, endless loops, which is a really, you know, a big no-no, other kinds of dead ends. So I talked earlier about, you know, the start and the end and some kind of a decision point here. There's certain loops that if you're not careful, you can never satisfy them. It always goes back to the beginning, for example, and then always goes back to here, and it can it, it makes it impossible to go this direction. <laughs> really, a good example I see of that is, uh, actually, I just wikipedia it right here. Uh, this old song, There's a Hole in My Bucket. Uh, this is a typical example of an endless loop. There's a hole in the bucket, and so somebody needs to repair it, but the tools that they need to repair it, they cannot get them because there's a hole in the bucket, and they need to carry the tools in the bucket or something like that. <laughs> anyway, if you want to care to look this up, that's a typical example of an endless loop. This will also help you to identify any duplicate steps that might be in your whole thought process, and you can make it more efficient. And also going to assist you then in writing clean code, and clean code simply means to use as few steps as possible, in other words, as few lines of code as possible, in order to complete the task. 
And the general idea behind that as well is that if you make something unnecessarily complex and long, it also becomes much more difficult to troubleshoot it later on. And then there is pseudocode. And this actually is kind of a combination of your program sequence, something that you might have also learned in your flowchart, and then you come up with this pseudocode. It's not an actual programming language, even though it says code right there. This is sometimes very similar to the program sequence that you've written out. The difference is it's going to be a little bit more program-ish for many folks. It's you, you, There's no rules for this. You kind of write it however you want to. But it's going to be a little bit more human readable than actual code. And it's going to be a kind of an outline of your programming process and goal. I'm actually going to show you this. So let's take a look at how all this might look. Here I want to have a coffee maker and I want to program it so that it can detect if there are coffee beans in the hopper. And if there are coffee beans in the hopper, I want it to start the grinder. If there are not coffee beans in the hopper, I want it to display some kind of a message to the user so that they know they need to add those beans. So again with this, there's no real right answer. You might come up with the same concept and write yours totally different than mine. It's probably going to be something in common in terms of the overall logic, but you might use different vocabulary or something like that. This is just to make sure that my, my sanity check is okay here. Uh, I want to create a program. This is my goal. I want to create a program to automatically grind my coffee beans. So we power on and we want there to be some kind of a check to see if there are beans in the hopper. Maybe there's a sensor in there that can detect, you know, by weight or something like that. If there's anything in there, if there are no beans, then I want it to send a message to the user. There might be uh, an uh, LED light that blinks on and off, a red light that blinks, you know, sirens that go off, an LCD screen, something like that, depending how fancy we want to be. But we just want a message to be sent to the user. Then once the beans are in the hopper, we want it to start the grinder. Okay, so that's just an example of how to write your program sequence. Again, you might write yours differently. Neither one of us would probably be right or wrong as long as we're following a logical flow that we can then later on program with. And then scrolling down here, here's also my, my flow chart. So I want to power on. And of course, this is a very simple flow chart. <laughs> Doesn't have much going on here. Uh, but I want to see if there are beans present. If no, then we want to display an LCD message, maybe no beans. And this might be an example also, by the way, of where I would have some kind of a loop present. So if there's no beans there, then the user has to you know, fill beans in and then they have to go back over here to the beginning and then hit the power button again. Now that there are beans present, it's going to go this way instead of this way. So once there are beans present and the answer is yes, then it starts the grinder sequence and you can see where the rest of this could go. There could be a branch off of here, you know, start the burner, start percolating the water, start maybe a timer. So after 30 minutes, the burner turns off. You could go all different kinds of directions there. And once I've got that out of the way, I might want to go now into my pseudocode, where again, there's no right or wrong answer for this stuff either. And if you were to write it with the same goals in mind, yours might look different than mine does. Some people do this whole thing very similar to what they would do with the program sequence. So there's nothing that looks code like. So for example, you can see here that I've got things like, a, you know, a brace there and I've got one contiguous word here instead of spaces in between. By the way, this is also called camel case where we capitalize the first letter of each word there. In some cases that might be required in various programming contexts and in others they're not case sensitive. But basically the idea we use the behind the camel case is we just want to make it more readable. That's all. But notice that I've also indented over here in this whole section here to identify that as a separate process to this part down here because here it's indented back out and then we do another whole sequence. And I already see a, a hole in my logic here. So that's part of what this whole thing is good for is to identify those kinds of problems. So that should give you a good idea on the kind of logic sequence that you go through, the kind of steps you go through to make sure that you have a, you know, a good sanity check and that hopefully will eventually help you to write clean code. All right, I hope this has been informative for you and I'd like to thank you for viewing.